Fear and Loathing in Anime. It's Between Nerds. Hi, guys. My name is Drew Philip Elias. I'm here with my co-host, Mr. Aldo Mendez. What's up, buddy? Another week, man. Another week. We're at fucking episode 60. Episode 60. So that makes this the last podcast episode for season two of Between Nerds Podcast. Congratulations. We fucking did it. Congratulations to you, brother. I could have not done it. Well... No, I could have not done it with that. I, I w- we are good enough that I would rank us in the top 20 podcasts for animation manga in the Dominican Republic. That's how I'm feeling today. I love the Dominican Republic. I love the Dominican Republic. I heard the food's really fucking good. Uh-huh. The La Renta, some good clothing, too. But at the beginning of this episode, I just want to reiterate um, that you all should be using hashtag diabetic nerds in an original tweet or instagram post to help us donate to the el paso diabetic association incorporated yes and we actually have like i believe one entry uh from one of our followers uh he's always pretty active too actually we, i got him confused with the winner of last month's but uh thank you very much to uh san Rioc, uh kurapika underscore goat on twitter Mm -hmm. thank you for using the hashtag yeah and and don't forget that by using hashtag diabetic nerds you will automatically be entered into our september giveaway and you'll get some cool free anime shit in the mail which who doesn't love free shit i love free shit especially anime free shit yeah me too I, i i it's probably my favorite gift to be honest and at the beginning of this episode i do want to remind everybody that as this episode episode 60 is the season finale of season two expect on either wednesday or thursday we haven't decided yet the episode 60.5 season finale recap where we'll be going over our feelings over a bunch of like the previous anime we've been watching improvements we've been doing how like our community is growing and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and this episode we will not be having a nerd down at the end since we're kind of treating the 60.5 episode as like a nerd down as a whole yes sir and then we'll touch down on any dirt down details we need to touch down on that episode yeah and and just so you all know like we're recording these back to back like right now yeah today is uh sunday september 12th Mm -hmm. uh we're gonna be recording this episode we're finishing this episode then we're gonna jump back into the mic and record the next episode. So as soon as we're done talking about Kiki's Delivery Service, we're going to take our pee break and we'll be right back at it. Which was a great week for I don't know about you, but I mean, we only had to watch one movie. Yeah. We just finished it today. Well, we're supposed to be lightly watching Death Note 2. Yes. So, but Kiki's Delivery Service blew my expectations out of the water. Like, it, it was, it's such like a... Like, it, every time Pixar makes, like, a new classic work, like, I guess I'm thinking of Soul or something mm-hmm. like that, and, like, you don't expect it to be good. It's, like, it's Pixar. It's Disney. You know mm-hmm. the quality is going to be there. Like, it's always going to be, a, like, above average, like a That's 6, right. 6.5 or something, no matter mm-hmm. what. But it, you, it's nice to be pleasantly surprised that they're still able to innovate, mm-hmm. which, like, Kiki's Delivery Service produced by Hao Miyazaki and put out by Studio Ghibli. I guess we all kind of knew it was supposed to be quality. It, but uh, I, it seems that for like the past three times that we have visited like a Ghibli studio movie, it almost feels like we're dipping the same sauce. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Uh, with a little bit of differences, but it's still pretty much the same. Same formula. Uh, yeah. Like good animation, don't get me wrong, like good music scores. The, the Disney dubs are pretty high quality. They get really known actors and actresses to play these parts. And to be more specific, like I want to, I want to just say that I'm talking about like my neighbor Totoro, Spirit Away, and Howl's Moving Castle. Like those are kind of like in the same sauce. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're all, it's all the exact same story. It's kind of, is it a dream? Is it not a dream? They're going into another world while meeting another person, and it's fantastical. But I, I think what I like about Kiki's Delivery Service is it's not like a Hao Miyazaki original story. Like, it's adapted by a 1985 children's novel by Mr. Um, Aiko Hayashi. So, it, it, it's... Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I love Miyazaki. He's the fucking go. But it's cool just getting out of all these adaptations of who his father was and what his family setting was growing up. Like, it's cool just to, like, get this make-believe 1989 swiss inspired village magical world magical world overseeing an ocean it's mm-hmm. so beautiful and like it's a beautiful story if it, it fucking blows away we're we started this movie yesterday 
And uh, we were just dumbfounded because this looks to be like the second big film by Miyazaki right after Totoro and... And uh, Grave of the Fireflies. And Grave of the Fireflies. Which, which that was a double feature. So the, mm-hmm. the and these are only one year apart. Like the double feature for Grave of the Fireflies and My Neighbor Totoro came out in 1988. 1989 is Kiki's Delivery Service. And mm-hmm. you had mentioned it before we turned on the mic. Kiki's Delivery Service, it, it feels like they, they just pumped the money that they made from these from the double feature back into the studio, which is a great investment, I think. Mm-hmm. We talked. We, I mean, we talked uh, about Akira and what their like framework, her, their frame rate was, their the amount of cells that they used, the amount of money that it took, and the amount of work that it took. Mm-hmm. Like this seems like it should have had the same uh, talks. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It, it's because. I think it's because Kiki's Delivery Service is actually marketed towards children. Like, it's mm-hmm. rated G. So, that gives, like, adults a reason to just, like, blow it off. Like, you, right. you, you've been telling me all week that your sister-in-law mm-hmm. kind of blows off, like, that we're almost 30 and we're out here just recording three-hour episodes over a singular anime. And not only that, we're on our 60th episode. And we're on our 60th episode of doing it. That doesn't include, like, double-featured episodes. That doesn't include half episodes, episodes where we're just talking about nonsense. But... It's it, as an adult, it's cool seeing the work that other adults can do, even it's, if it was originally directed towards children. Because Kiki's delivery service, from like a technical standpoint, you're like, how the fuck? What the fuck is this? It's it's so. Um, it, it's like the first time I saw Toy Story as a child. Mm-hmm. And if um, it's um, and the way you talked about it, like to see small frames or small memories of Miyazaki's uh, childhood or the way that he was brought up because you do see this these like if you don't know a lot about or if you don't look into it you won't know that those things are there right but like how we talk about in the past Ghibli movies is the same dad character yeah you know all the dads look exactly the same in every Miyazaki movie which is supposed to be based off of his dad uh huh yeah so and, and that's very grown up of it you know right. what i'm saying like right. he's able to put his own stories and put it in this amazing media mm-hmm. but still a eight-year-old can watch this and be like yo yeah yeah i agree because my neighbor totoro don't get me wrong like that's the face of studio ghibli like every work afterwards is loosely based off of like their, their logo their ghibli. logo is totoro yeah that's what i'm saying and but kiki's delivery service is like the flagship, I would say, of like where you really want to be able to take them seriously. Because it's like, it, my neighbor Totoro kind of had like a few, fl- it, it seemed to have lower frame rates. No, I'm not entirely sure, I'm but sure like, it did. It, the, every, there was like half as much in motion in every scene as in Kiki's delivery service. The, the, there was, it's not nearly as colorful and not even like, um, by design, my neighbor Toto is kind of like a lot of black, grays, and browns, mm. but there aren't that many shades of it. Kiki's yeah. delivery service is the same palette the whole movie, but it's just like they triple the number of colors on screen. Yeah, it's they have I, I don't know it was like something close to four hundred and sixty something different colors in the movie used for the movie, and it looks which for nineteen eighty nine that's ridiculous. Yeah, for. Yeah, dude, like, just thinking about animating all this stuff by hand is ridiculous. Uh, imagine any, like, regular serialized anime in 1989. I'm thinking, like, Astro Boy or something. There's, like, mm-hmm. 20 colors in every fucking episode yeah. of Astro Boy. Yeah, like, Speed uh, Speed Racer 2, the same mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, 12 colors yeah. in Speed Racer. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the movie starts off with, like, just her laying on the grass with a little bit of breeze by a lake and they're just animating the shit out of her hair yeah. out of her dress we, we, we call it the Studio Ghibli jerk off <laughs> and they just hit you with it like right at the beginning they're just like Bloop. yeah we're just like they're, they're just like showing you and just like flexing themselves all over your face just like look at this great work I can do and, and that's what's gonna be the entire movie it's a honestly, movie. It's honestly it has very little times where there's stills Right. Like you, we see, we're seeing a still right now of like that the baker dude of the the, the husband of that lady. Mm-hmm. The later on, later on in the movie, like he just walks into there, but the rest is a still. Yeah, and, and so it reminds when I was a kid, probably my earliest the the oldest work in animation I'd seen as a child was probably um, I want to say the 1960s cartoon movie version of The Hobbit. Uh. Yeah, my dad had it for some reason, just because he's some weird fucking hippie. 
So uh-huh. I remember watching that on VHS and being like, going from like shit that was coming out in 1994. I'm watching the Spider Man um, cartoon from the 90s. I'm watching um, the like old episodes of Dragon Ball Z. Mm. I'm watching stuff like that, and then I see. 1960s American rendition of The Hobbit. I'm like, this shit's ass. And it's so rare that Kiki's Delivery Service like feels like... Could this, be made the, today. It, yeah, Kiki's Delivery Service, what I'm trying to say is that each scene feels like it's alive. Like, there's so much motion and color and just the world... Shiny feels, wood. The world feels filled out all the time. Oh, it, tooth. Just... Doing the utmost for animation and trying to tell you this story that we haven't even fucking talked about. But we follow Kiki, our young witch from a village that she's already the old age of 13 years old. Yeah, I don't even think they give us the name of this village. We don't know what country no. we're in. Like, it, it, it's, it, it took us just talking it over and being like, I guess this is Europe. We thought it was Italy for half the movie until we just... Yeah. But the premise of the movie is that... There's communities of witches, and they each kind of have, like, an assignment where you have to go to a town that doesn't have a witch and kind of just help everybody, and you're kind of making your own business. So you're kicked out of the house at 13 to go do that, and that's you being a witch in training, which, it's kind of fucked up. You're sending a literal child out into the real world. But you're also a witch. But And it's also a kid's movie, so I'm like, oh, okay, okay, because... Mm-hmm. There'd be a lot of other concerns. It reminds like, me of Sabrina. We talked about it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, the the 1960s sitcom yeah. Sabrina. Mm-hmm. Because and, and it, I think it knows that because a lot of the um, oh, so like a bewitched almost reference. Yeah, there's a bewitched reference like in the opening title sequence to Kiki's Delivery Service that looks like that logo of of what's of her, her face flying around yeah. the moon. Yeah, of her going over the moon. Mm-hmm. So. And I like when works, like, nothing's completely original anymore, right? Nothing's mm-hmm. been completely original. You can always since, refer like, anything to anything else. Anything to anything else. Yeah. A- unless you were, like, the originator of the originator. Mm-hmm. Like, even people will be like, no, I don't like Mozart because he stole from Bach. Like, yeah. imagine. Uh-huh. It's like, yeah, fuck Mozart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, okay, whatever, bro. Uh-huh. And, um, but the story feels like almost like Wizard of Oz ish. Like the, the character design of Kiki herself feels like an old school looking witch. And when I saw those red shoes that she wanted to cop, I was like, mm. <coughs> Yeah, she's um so she goes, she's but she's not her mom d- doesn't describe her as a very capable witch. She's like, the only thing Kiki knows how to do is like fly. She doesn't even do that well. The mom, when we see her on screen, she's making potions. And she's like, she, I haven't showed her how to make any of these potions. She doesn't give a shit. Mm-hmm. And then you feel bad for this dad character that's introduced because he's trying to get ready to go camping for the weekend for the family. And he seems to be human. So I guess the logic here is that only the women inherit like a, he's like a, a witch. Mongol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like the muggle that the yeah. mom married or something. Yeah. <laughs> So you see him sad as a human, just father, and his 13-year-old girl just, like, walks up to him and is like, Hey, Dad, I'm leaving tonight. I know you you were excited about camping tomorrow, but I have to go live by myself in the middle of nowhere because I'm a witch. Mm-hmm. And it, it's sad, but at the same time, it's like... Well, because they care for her, and, like, the way they... The way that they undermined her is very, like, subtle. Like, it's like, are you sure? Because at one point, she makes her own broom. She's like, I'm fucking ready. She's excited. And they're like, are you sure you want to take that broom? It's like, just take mine. The mom is like, just take mine. Mine's been, like, you, you know, it's an old witch broom. Yeah, and it's... um the, Very good advice. The, they, they compared the two. And, like, Kiki, the, the broom that Kiki made. And when we say broom, we mean, like... Like a 1950s broom, like it's a stick with yeah. straw tied around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a broom. And um, Kiki's broom is a lot more frayed, less bristles, it's a lot smaller. The mom's is larger, sturdier. And it takes like the grandma in this scene to be like, oh, maybe just take your mom's because it's safer. And then once you're at your new place, you can make your own broom. And it's again, if the point of the story is like, the hero's journey and becoming a grown woman in this instance and like becoming an adult and self-sufficient it's kind of ironic that it starts the movie by saying that she's still relying on her mom's power as a witch her mom's broom to get where she needs Mm -hmm. and she takes fucking off Mm -hmm. she takes fucking off and she bombs into like two trees every time she takes off it's hilarious Mm because like it'll be the very last scene and she's still 
just uh, bumping into trees and almost hurting herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the animated shit, it's just like you're watching better Dragon Ball flying. Yeah. Like, without the without the, the, the glow on the sides. Well, what was cheap about Dragon Ball flying is they wouldn't... Um, the scenes where the character was in focus, they wouldn't have the character actually moving. They just have the background in motion. Mm-hmm. And that's how they saved money because Toy totally Animation has been fucking cheap for forever. But then the scenes where it's a, uh, a still background, they would just show like a blur. Mm-hmm. For, like, the character flying away. Kiki's delivery service, the background's in motion, the character's in motion. Everything's in motion. Everything's like in motion. Like, items, items that the characters in the background are using. And there's a lot of fucking character designs in this. There's a whole town of different character designs in this fucking movie. Mm-hmm. And, and just the nature of, um, e, of it being a delivery service about a flying witch... Like, she's always in the air, so they're having to draw a lot of things in motion naturally. Because they're having to give you the effect of, mm-hmm. like, flying around in the wind. It's like what was really good about the first Superman, the Man of Seal. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't see it. You didn't see that one? I didn't see it because I fell for the Twitter canceling before, like, I had a chance to Twitter see it. Twitter canceling? Not, not, like, canceling, like, movie? something bad happening. Like, nerd Twitter... Tried to air quotes cancel it because it didn't fit the traditional Superman character, which was kind of the point, right? Well, yeah, because it was written by some Russian dude. Right, but like Superman would have never killed him in that movie. Yeah. Because that's literally not in ever in any Superman character ever. Ever. So like I did never watch it because I had that bad taste in my mouth because nerd Twitter like mm-hmm. Air quotes yeah. canceled it, just being like, no, it do- it's not right. It doesn't fit the character. Batflick killed some people too. Everybody was mad at that. Yeah, I remember that. And then it's like a dream, but it's not a dream. And now it's kind of canon. Uh-huh. But it's not because you're going back in time. Oh, ho- hold on. Before I lose this thought, I'm, I'm going to derail for a second. Because I was thinking about canon in Star Wars today. Mm-hmm. Because PlayStation had their trailer reveal thing two days ago, right? Mm-hmm. And about all the originals. And so we're getting this PS5 reboot of Knights of the Old Republic, right? Mm-hmm. Currently, since LucasArts was sold to Disney... The Knights of the Old Republic canon is not canon. So, I'm getting excited because these characters are probably my favorite non-canon characters. Uh I don't think I have... It's, um... I haven't either, but I read, like, a lot of lore. Mm -hmm. And the lore coming out of these characters here is, like, such a a crazy thing. It's about, like, Jedi students going to the dark side, but but then becoming, like, Jedis again. Is that bald dude? It's, um... Fuck, I wish I could remember his name. I'll, I'll remember right now. Mm-hmm. But I'm excited for the for probably my favorite characters from the extended universe becoming canon again. So maybe that means Star Wars is setting up like a new trilogy that maybe has them as part of the main canon of films. Mm-hmm. I mean, shit. I don't even know what the fuck they're going to... Well, this is a lot of narrow down talk. Okay. You know? Uh, do you want to go back into the story? You want- what, whatever. We can get back into the story. Um... Where were we in the story? We we're, So Kiki, she leaves, and when she takes off, her whole thing is just like, I have to find this town that I've been thinking about that's just like, it. Oh, it's on a mountain, overlooks like the ocean or the water or something. It, and it, immediately we started thinking of like Italy, like Florence or some stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's certain parts where it looks like Greece. But apparently it's based off of uh, villages from... Switzerland? I think I said Swiss earlier. So, yeah. And it's it, it seems Sweden. like this grand Yeah, Sweden. Excuse me. Fuck. I get all those like European countries mixed up. Yeah. Like Sweden, Switzerland. Fuck there has to be like four more that I'm just yeah. missing. But anyway, so she finds the village and she's flying around and it's um it's it's fantastical in the sense that none of these villagers have seen a witch before. Implying that a witch hasn't visited this town in forever, but, like, we heard about Kiki's, like, incentive here is all witches need to, like, go to a town and, like, set up a home and, like, help out the villagers. It seems like that, but it's never set. Right. So this village is in need of some help. So, it's like, it's cool that, like, the good-hearted Kiki that we're being introduced to is out here to help this town. And it's not, like, help, like, oh, shit, monsters, help. No, 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 no. Like... You the, the the girl comes in there flying, but uh, who gives her the first delivery? The birdcage. Oh, hold on, because oh. like there's like this whole sequence of her um, getting lost, 
And oh, in the train. Getting lost in the train because she she's trying that's to right. fly to this initial village. It starts raining, and we and that's why we thought it was Japan for a second because in a lot of anime they show like the monsoon just randomness of rain where it'll be completely sunny one second and then it's just raining the next. Mm. So I thought it really was Japan for a second. I was like, oh, but she she wakes up in like a batch of hay, and we're introduced to like these cows but it's literally there like we were talking about about they just like want, want to show off their animation they're showing off animal character models if you know look good it looks really good like it's there for like 10 seconds just to be the like look we can, we can draw cows too like, like the story's not moving a second before you see this shit mm-hmm. <laughs> and so again she gets to this new village she's kind of lost like the cops try to harass her because she's like breaking rules, flying around the village, which oh, is stupid. And it looks good, and this is where we see all these fucking townspeople mm-hmm. that she's flying through. And I don't know, it just reminds me of like the Matrix for some reason. What? I don't know, like the the flying through and everything. It's crazy, and you see all this animated motion of like different fucking panels and different like characters. And mm-hmm. then that's when she stops and she's like, "Hey, how's it going?" Everybody's like, "Oh shit, a witch." That's cool. So we know that like the people are not trying to get the witch like they're in not every tr- fucking movie. Yeah, they're they're not trying to hurt her or anything, but they're not comfortable around her. Cause mm-hmm. you're right. She lands at like a crosswalk, tries talking to some random people, and they just look at her like she might as well be that crazy yelling homeless guy on the street, just yeah. like, uh, don't talk to me, weirdo. Oh. And just go about their business. And it starts raining. No. The Kiki's flying around sad because she gets yelled at for flying around uh, in the streets by the cop. But um, she sees like this pregnant chick coming out of a bakery talking to herself kind of but talking out loud being like, oh, that lady down on that hill left this baby's binky. Mm. Um, I really need to go give this to her. But like, again, I'm pregnant. and I'm trying to host the store and Kiki just like wanting to be nice and help people around the village. Mm -hmm. She's just like, I'll take it. And then she flies it down that hill and she gets like a thank you note from this lady from this lady whose baby was being fussy and starting to cry. And uh, while we thought it was going to be like a 90 minute movie, it turns out to be an hour and 45 minutes, Mm -hmm. you know, which is a little bit more. But uh, up to this point, I mean, you're already liking what the 40 minute mark, maybe before maybe we're we're probably like 30 minutes in right now like 20 30 minutes in oh, okay. like once like kiki's delivery service becomes kiki's delivery service like we're, this is where she gets the idea okay. where she uses her her broom to help this lady deliver this binky and then and then that's where she gets her delivery service idea because mm-hmm. the the owner of the bakery is like hey you're like clearly a, a young girl like stop flying around and walking around this weird ass town i have an empty attic that you should totally use and you're a witch and you're helping me and i'm down to have you here and trying to help out the bakery and then i'll kind of she she turns into like an adopted mother figure a little bit the baker lady does mm-hmm. Be- doesn't the doesn't when she delivers the uh the binky the chupon uh doesn't he, she give her a note it's like hey your delivery girl is the best and blah 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 and that's where like they're like oh yeah you should fucking do that yeah yeah absolutely so she gets a dirty ass attic room right right and uh, she has to clean it, but the lady's pregnant, so she doesn't help her. Yeah. And uh, they... Uh, her name's Osuno, by the way. And then we see this, like, super fancy dressed lady go into the bakery. Mm-hmm. And again, like, the animation is so good, because, like, her dress bobs, in contrast with, like, the bread that is laid out on the back, mm-hmm. the cars, and uh, she comes in with a birdcage mm-hmm. and has a... By coincidence, for the story, it has a little plush cat that looks like Gigi. Right. That we haven't, we we haven't, haven't even described Gigi. Yeah. She has a familiar who's a black cat and he can speak. He can he, like he speaks in English to Kiki. I guess that was my book. I guess that was my point with mentioning Sabrina. Mm-hmm. And we didn't really talk about it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, so yeah, it's taken from a bunch of mm-hmm. different things. And what's cool about like um this lady is she's the neighbor of the bakery and she gives kiki like her first like big delivery it's mm-hmm. like hey take this toy which is a bird cage with a little plush black cat on the inside to my nephew like far away across like this little forest thing mm-hmm. 
and even like the bakery lady is like oh shit that's kind of far can you really do this and kiki like excited to be starting her job and like be doing her witch and training stuff is like fuck yeah i got this and like kind of just goes immediately Mm -hmm. and with Gigi on her shoulder but she kiki's like clearly not a great flyer because like you were describing earlier she when she takes off a lot of the time she's flying directly in the tree she's hitting buildings she kind of does like this aot kind of thing yeah she oh, looks like she's an she odm is. gear just like zipping around on stuff but really she's just like bad at flying and like falling into things so she gets caught in like an updraft over like this wooded area and she drops the toy on a crow's nest so she flies down grabs it but like this whole gang of crows in the forest like are pissed and calling her an egg stealer and Gigi, because i don't know cat and magic he he can speak to the birds so he's like the birds are calling you a bird stealer the birds are calling you an egg stealer they're gonna murder you so they fly away but then they notice that they had dropped the the black cat plush toy that was inside of the bird cage Mm -hmm. that looks exactly like Gigi. that looks exactly like Gigi. So Kiki being like, fuck, I have to deliver this now or else I'm in trouble. And my, and like the lady kind of like overpaid her like a like a good amount of money to. You don't see it, though. That's you don't see I, it. Yeah. But you see Kiki being like, like, oh, shit, thank you. <laughs> this is way too much. Are you sure? And she's like, yeah, don't worry about it. So she has this incentive to be getting this delivery to the person like in a decent amount of time. And um, so their their bright ideas is exactly what you're thinking. They put Gigi up mm-hmm. inside of the birdcage, make him pre- pretend to be a toy, and it's gonna be up to Kiki to go back to the forest, find the plush doll, and like they'll do they'll swap it out. Mm-hmm. And like the the cage gets delivered to like some nameless. Pro- they probably named him, but like he's a, he's a character in the movie, but he's not like a big part in the movie. And they just animate this whole sequence of like this kid getting a birdcage. Trying to change the birds, and we know that this kid is kind of a, like a dick. Yeah, yeah. It, like he seems like a rich asshole, kind mm-hmm. of. like Richie Rich or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, not not to that extent, but like, yeah, you get it. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. because he gets the bird cage, and this starts being a theme with like all of Kiki's initial deliveries. Like the people are just so ungrateful pieces of shit, and it starts here because he's like, oh, she's got me another bird cage and some stupid cat plush. I'm just, I'm gonna put my canary in this cage because that's all I really care about. Mm-hmm. And because he even calls a plush ugly, but yeah. at this point it's Gigi, right, right, mm-hmm. right. And, and but there's this giant like old hound inside of the house, and and Gigi's like freaking out. So it's really Tom and Jerry, but that's like the cute joke, I, I guess. Know. Well, Kiki has to go back to the forest. And um, she's trying to find the black plush doll, but she finds, like, this hidden cabin by some artist who just, like, lives in the wood. And mm-hmm. she's friends with the crows that were just trying to murder her early. For some fucking reason. For magic reasons. For, well, it's not even magic. No. It's because, like... She just spent so many time there, the crows are like, oh, she's cool. Yeah, or later on, she does kind of describe it as being, like, the, like the magic of being an artist. Mm. She starts comparing directly, like, Kiki's witch magic... To her artistry in the sense that like it takes this hyper attuned focused like skill set that not everyone can do yeah 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 something you're passionate in so it's that little parallel down there but she's cool she she's got the black plush cat inside of her cabin but the head's torn off because it got all fucked up when Mm. kiki was fighting with the crows so we we see the same scene twice which is like kiki washing wooden floors but it looks really shiny yeah like she's just on her knees just scraping with like a brush with a hand brush just and uh it it's just shiny it just they, they just decided to reflect shit off it, of it. it it's like in uh snow white and the seven dwarves like the original disney one how like the wood th- shines really but, I don't think so. but i don't understand how like it, it's did, crazy did wood floors used to shine like that i mean even with even with uh what do you call the clear coat on top i mean you know uh-huh uh-huh i've never experienced clean wood floors anyways so um kiki to as like a favor for this artist for like sewing the head back on the doll mm-hmm. she um she cleans her cabin makes the wood all clean but she makes a friend because clearly this artist is interested in Kiki. And that's the significance here. Because she's like, hey, come back. I want to paint your portrait anytime. And Kiki just kind of dips out and never intends to see her. Yeah, <laughs> or she no. doesn't make the point to do it. 
No, and like, it's not. It's not really. The, yeah, there's no connection for her to come back. Like, there's no reason for her to come back. Mm-hmm. It was just a person she she met, just like the delivery services were. Yeah, but because and do you think like the the title Kiki's Delivery Service had to do with us liking the movie because her being a witch and everything was like whoa okay crazy. Um, or I mean, I'm pretty sure you had some background on it, but I, honestly, I didn't know what the fuck this movie was gonna be about. I didn't either. I thought it was gonna be about a human girl like learning how to fly, and then that's how she was gonna do it. I, I, I guess I really didn't understand what the plot was gonna be. I didn't understand that it was a world like void of World War One and World War Two, and that's why it's like super happy mm-hmm. 1950s Europe. Yeah, Woo, and not yeah. everyone all fucking depressed, sad, and, and yeah, eating bread. There being a lost well, generation of men, and um. So yeah, that's how we're. That's how we were. I guess just me. I was meant to believe that that's what the stories were gonna be. Just visiting different characters. I I think the significance of especially the very first few like happenings with her delivery service is like every interaction she has with her just trying to like pu- transport something from point A to point B. She makes a personal connection with people, which is kind of the point of the story. It's kind of like do. What you're best at and just try to help people no matter what. Because the whole point of Kiki's delivery service is these people's lives are changing for the better because a witch decided to move into town. Yeah. Yeah, and there's no like negative stigma throughout the movie. No, wow. it, there's barely any conflict. It's mm-hmm. like my neighbor Totoro in that way. It's super but, like... But neighbor Totoro, for some reason, I can't connect this to Grave of the Fireflies, but my neighbor Totoro puts me in Grave of the Fireflies. Right. You know what I'm saying? But this, I don't need to mention Griff of the Fireflies because I know it's going to be happy and they told you from the gecko mm-hmm. f- somehow. Well, I'm not saying like super like some like depressing conflict. I'm saying like there's it, it's hard to tell for me what the major hurdle we were trying to get over is here. Which like there kind of never was one. She's just learning. She's just going through what she wants to do, I guess. It, it's something that I could see being um, really interesting as a... Um, as something episodic, like it reminds me of the Studio Trigger anime uh, Little Witch Academia. And Little Witch Academia was an anime that was crowdsourced on the internet. Like that's how it was funded. It was mm-hmm. when the guy that made um, uh, Studio Trigger uh, got out of his deal with, um, I want to say it was like Madhouse or somebody like that. The guys mm-hmm. that made Gurren Lagan, mm-hmm. And he... he it feels a lot like Kiki's delivery service. Like the character model for the witch in Little Witch Academia is almost exactly the same, except it's like a mold of Kiki's delivery service in like Harry Potter because it's a school. Mm-hmm. But it's um the 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 difference like here and there is like in Kiki's delivery service, the main bulk of like the middle of the film is just like these mini adventures she's having, which almost feels like an episodic anime, mm-hmm. which is why it reminds me of Little Witch Academia so much. Oh, okay. Because like immediately after the resolution with like switching out the doll and Gigi and getting the cat back. Mm-hmm. We get to meet the, the dog. Yeah, the dog is cool because Gigi can speak to animals and he's just like, and the dog like sneaks Gigi out and just like places him on the ground. Mm-hmm. And he takes the plush back inside, mm-hmm. closes the door behind him. And the rain looks amazing. A big bump on the rain from my neighbor Totoro to this one. Because in this one, they put raining, they put lightning. It's fucking ridiculous. She gets heavy with the rain. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah because the um, the when when she's when she's trying to deliver. Okay, she so, gets back. No, no. So the from rain the, sequence you're describing. Uh-huh. Is like her second big delivery because again, this really rich old lady wants to deliver a pie from her to her granddaughter. Mm-hmm. So sweet fucking lady, sweet fucking lady, like the sweetest fucking lady you can ever meet, you can that I've ever seen in like uh, an anime film like this. Yeah. Because so Kiki shows up, the old lady's like, "I'm sorry, I made you c- come all the way out here, and my electric oven isn't working, so I can't bake this pie, and you can't take it to my granddaughter." And Kiki. Like, receives payment because, you know, she's fucking just eating pancakes and she's broke. Mm-hmm. But she sees the amount of money and she's like, dude, I didn't do anything. I can't take all this money. So she goes out of her way to make, like, this old lady's month by going to grab firewood, turn on her old, like, brick oven furnace, sitting there baking the pie with her, and delivering the pie in the rain. Because the rain sequence you're describing, it's, um, they, they even have, like, physics in this movie. Because mm. if she's trying to fly on a broom, if she gets weighed down with water, there's more force dragging her down. And at that same time, she's trying to, 
like protect this the pie, pie. <laughs> which, which is in like one of those like ceramic pots. Uh, yeah, and the and the and before we get uh, any further, like the sequence with the grandmas is like, oh, you're such a nice girl. We're so lucky to have a witch here with us. They're like, oh my god, you guys are so nice. Like, let me help you. And like, it's just so wholesome. Yeah, so wholesome. So now you have Kiki going through the rain, trying to protect, trying to protect this pie, and the cat's getting wet too. Yep. She's getting weighed down. She's flying, and she's trying to deliver this fucking pie like completely intact, like untouched. Which she does. Which she does. does. And again, she shows up to like some rich kid's house, and this girl opens the door. It's the most fucked up scene. This is probably the most fucked up scene right here because it's. She knocks on the door. This snobby girl opens up, and Kiki's like dripping wet. And she's like, "Here, I was able to get the pie to you. Please sign the receipt right here. I made it in good time." And the girl, like, super disrespectful. Like, this grandma's like old as fuck. Her oven's broken. She has to request like random people help her bake this pie. She has to pay this girl an absorbent amount to get you this stupid pie by the end of the day. And the girl's like. Oh, well, she should just stop sending me her pies because they're all stupid and they suck. And it just, like, breaks your heart while watching it. You're just like, what the fuck? Like, kids are so ungrateful. And Kiki, because she's a professional, like, she has to get signatures from, like, their, you know? Mm -hmm. their The the people that they're getting. She calls it a receipt. Yeah. So, like, she's just all heartbroken giving this uh, ledger to to this girl. And she's all broken hearted. And it's sad. Yeah, it's really it's fucking up. crazy. And uh, just I, we we were talking about it while watching it. How like funny it is. How people used to verify things. Mm. Like imagine you really needed to just memorize everybody's phone number. And not only that, you need to be able to recognize by looking at it all your friend's signatures. Oh yeah, that's him. That's true. Yeah, like if. If I sent you something and I go to the carrier, I'm like, yo, did Alda Mendes ever receive this? They're going to show me your signature and they'll be like, yeah, Alda Mendes signed him. But I need to be able to like, recognize your fucking signature. I guess that's his. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that's- being in the 50s sounds fucking wild. Yeah, but Rolodex? Fuck yeah. Crazy. <laughs> but uh, it, it becomes like another sad travel back. Yeah, because so she's soaked in the rain and she gets sick. Yeah, she does. And we think it's... I thought it was going to get a little bit sad here. <laughs> you were thinking it was going to be Grave of the Fireflies? She was going to just, like, die in the bed or no, something? No, for some reason it reminded me of, like... Uh, what is it? Uh, Mockingbird? Is that the one with the leukemia girl? Oh, yeah. Something like that. Yeah? Oh, you thought she was getting, like gonna get like tuberculosis and die some shit like that dude yeah. so and, and again there's this wild ass contraption coming out of the bed it's like just this pole that sticks out of the the headboard of the bed and you can uh tie an ice pack to the end of it so if you're just sick you just lay in bed and there's just this contraption holding an ice to, pack you don't over have your to head. move it bro that's hilarious it's the most it's the funniest stupidest looking thing i've ever seen it's great and Kiki's like depressed because she just wants to be this badass like delivery service witch, but instead she's getting sick. She can't go to um, a dinner that she was invited to by like this boy she kind of has a crush on. Well, he he's very much got a crush on her. It's his and little... we met him in the intro. Yeah, it's the nerd in like all of the trailers too. The he looks kid like with... Tintin. Yeah, he's got like like red hair and like glasses. This, like front cowlick uh, cowlick yeah. up on the front yeah he's got this huge cowlick in the front yeah. but like the minute kiki comes into town he's he's like enamored with her he's like yo girl where are you at where are you going uh my my name's oh she he doesn't even introduce himself so she doesn't want to talk to him because she's like don't you know it's super disrespectful to start speaking to a girl before you know her name mm-hmm, because when she goes when she was kind of getting harassed by the cop somebody yelled thief thief and the way he came up to the girl, it was like, "Hey, wasn't that cool? I was. It was me, Theo, the one the Tombo. <laughs> the, the one, the one that yelled thief. Right. And she just was, and she was like, "Okay." So we're led to believe that, like, he is like this, like, "Okay, okay, you gotta do be serious. You gotta be serious. She's yeah. not just a simple girl. She, she's old school. Yeah. She, she's got those old sensibilities, <laughs> and um, at, at a certain point, like, he finds the bakery she's working in." And he um, shows up to her place of work and it kind of invites her to like an aviation 
club meeting with like this super fancy invitational letter which so, is cool so it's like a dinner it's like a ball where a bunch of aviation nerds are going to show up which is like the wildest concept i've ever heard and so the night that everything was raining he came to the bakery to pick her up too so that they could walk together to the fancy dinner oh. and she just kind of blew him off because she was sad that she only owned like one pair of clothes which was her fucking witch dress and that she was probably going to get sick and all her clothes were were soaked and she didn't have any appreciation given. So she just takes like a depression nap and blows off this like uh, Tombow guy. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it, it's also still really sad because she yells at Gigi the next day because she's really sick and feels like shit. And she's just being like, you know what I mean? She's just in bad mood and just like just yells at stop. Gigi. Yeah. And takes like her aggression out on him. And it takes, like, her walking around the village and kind of, like, refinding it and, like, reappreciating it that she decides she wants to stay. Because for a second, she's like, you know what? Fuck this trip. Being, stop, uh, fuck being a witch in training. I'm just going to give up and go home. Mm-hmm. Uh, run back with my tail between my legs kind and, of thing. And she gets the, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2 syndrome. What? Where, where Spider-Man loses his powers because he's not sure he wants to be Spider-Man. But that's later on, though. Huh? That's later on, though. Because what happens immediately next is when she's walking around the town. Yeah, yeah, later on. Not, not right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right now, she's kind of like re-falling in love with the village because she's walking around being depressed, walks past Tombo's, like house. He sees her and just starts talking and just like being obnoxious almost but just like clearly interested in her and like pulls out his bike with a propeller on it and it's just like look 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 i can fly too i can fly too and it's it's funny because we kind of again get that studio ghibli just showing off sequence where it's just them riding downhill on his bike but there's so much motion and 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 frames of motion are changing like the chain is moving, the pedals are moving, cars are driving yeah. by, the the seas in the background, her dress, her hair. Mm-hmm. We're seeing like yeah, the wind like flying by them as they're running by, and mm. it's just so wild to see because it's just a full ten minute sequence that looks gorgeous. But the w- narratively, it, it's 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 dumb kind of, but it's supposed to be juvenile. But that's just how Studio Ghibli is. It's just <laughs> magical. They just want to serve you like ah. Yeah, but, like, the Spring resolution convention. to it is, like, they get to a blimp at the end of this hill. It, they, they call it the Heisenberg or something. They call the the Heisenberg? Is that the... They, they give it this weird big German... The, yeah, but they give it this weird big German name, but it's yeah. just this giant-ass blimp. Yeah. Because this guy's just an aviation nerd. And they get there to the hill, and they're chilling out, watching the ocean, looking at the blimp. And then Tombo's friends come by, and it's the, the bitchy girl that... Kiki tried to deliver the pie to it and all of Tombo's other friends. And mm. Kiki, kind of juvenile, but kind of like knowing that this other girl is kind of a bitch, like, um, she she gets really mad that Tombo's even talking to these yeah. like really jealous, but like they're not dating or anything. It's really it's immature. They're 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 13, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to make sense. And she gets mad. She just like straight up like mm. And starts walking home. She goes home and takes another depression nap. She has this pattern of just going home and taking this weird depression, depression nap. Naps. That's right. There's a lot of depression naps in this movie. Because she wakes up and she thinks she's lost, like, her ability to, like, use magic. Why? And yeah. Gigi's not talking. Yeah, Gigi's not talking. She just hears meowing. And she's like, what the fuck is this? And she she tries flying on her broom and because she's lost, like, her magical power, she just falls and breaks her broom, which was her mother's broom that was given to her at the beginning of it. And again, like we get like this whole like little emo sequence of this 13 year old girl being like, I can't do the delivery service. I should just go home. Mom and dad were right. Mm-hmm. But she's uh, requested, she, she's kind of like abducted by the artist girl that she met in the woods mm-hmm. because she helps her rediscover her passion. Because the artist girl shows up in the town. She's like, oh, sweet, I found you. I came to town just to find you. I really wanted to paint you real bad. And she's, and that's where we're getting the scene that I described earlier about her comparing, like, Kiki's magic to artistry. Because it's like, yeah, I have some days, too, where I can't do magic and I feel like I can't hear the art around me. Mm. I have some days, too, where I literally cannot draw anything because, like, I don't have that spirit, that motivation that day. But it's okay to, like, re-find yourself and re-find your passion. And, you know, just anime shit. Like, it's a good, yeah. feel-good speech. We have good episodes, we have bad episodes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, 
Re- refinding your purpose in it is mm-hmm. what I guess I'm trying to say. Because she is like, okay, cool. Maybe I can't fly again. Maybe I can't do that. And once she gets back to the bakery, that rich old lady that she baked the pie for previously had called for her. And she's like, hey, she's got another job for you. Do you want to do it? And she reluctantly goes, knowing that she should find her footing eventually. She's like, okay, cool. I like this old lady anyways. I'll go try to help her. Yeah. And she's watching TV with the old ladies. And she sees on the news that giant blimp thing with Tombow attached to it is like falling through the sky. Mm -hmm. Because the blimp was like tied to the ground and a, a wind current took it. So it took like a bunch of cars and like... Uh, a rope on it with Tombo attached to it because you know he's a little aviation nerd and he was hanging out with the with the pilot with the blimp, the blimp yeah, yeah, yeah with the blimp guys and <laughs> that's a good blimp good, good, good so so Kiki gets like this this is her call to action this is the hero's journey mm. she jumps up and is like holy fuck I need to learn how to fly now so that I can go save Tombo because he's falling out of the sky yeah, she beats up a custodian for his broom now i'm just playing no like she uh there's a like a, a guy with a broom yeah it's she, like a, a she, brush she's literally running through town like just yeah. huffing it and everyone's just like standing around shocked because they see this giant ass blimp falling out of the sky she sees like a literal janitor like on the street with his broom just grabs it and just yeah. goes super saiyan mode for a second like her hair spikes up you see the bristles the like dust of the of the because the the roads are those those place bricks mm-hmm. so it, it kind of like gets the the grout out of the the seams of the of every little thing so you see like this this almost acura yeah like the force the is like force pushing out. out the dust from underneath her hair spikes up the broom's bristles starts like fucking flickering yep her dress is one of the biggest continuous motions in this fucking anime yep and it just fucking takes off it's it's fucking crazy it doesn't even fucking take off because she hits the two buildings but at this point it looks like she knows that she's gonna hit something Mm -hmm. so she's now prepared with her legs so she does this kind of it's also not her broom you know what i mean like this one like it wasn't made for flying you see her talking to the broom like come on you stupid broom like why won't you fly like why aren't you as good as my mom's broom Mm -hmm. and we again we get like this really good animation sequence for maybe two whole minutes of her like falling through the city like she falls through a shopping district like a bunch of people eating breakfast or some shit and just like zooms past it which again feels kind of dragon ball-y because we've seen that in dragon ball before where like the characters will just uh fly away really quickly and it'll take up like uh like picnic blankets or like food and stuff like that Mm -hmm. so it feels kind of dragon ball-ish in this sequence which is kind of funny because i didn't expect to be able to compare the two but uh she the blimp runs into the clock tower that she saw like when she first got to the village we initially thought that was gonna be her home yeah we we, didn't know what the fuck was gonna go we were like it'd be super witchy if she ended up living in the clock tower we Mm -hmm. thought that'd be really sweet but tombo is is literally hanging off a rope off of this blimp hanging off of this clock tower like he's a hundred feet off the ground like he's totally about to die Mm -hmm. and kiki like finally learning how to be a good witch like is like falling and not able to catch him but the very last second she gets full control of the broom flies down before he splatters on the ground and catches him at the last second Mm -hmm. it's really cool it's really good animation like narratively the the narrative doesn't matter it's almost like a disservice to talk like and now and now that i think about it the movie keeps you with wanting more yeah yeah, I, yeah i wanted to see her make a new broom mm-hmm. i wanted to see you know some sort some other source of magic in in the in the movie i i think this would be again that's what i'm saying i want more backstory i want more adventures mm-hmm. from her even like you only get three four adventures with her i feel like i should have gotten way more and it, it makes me want to watch the little witch i could i never heard of that and maybe eventually we'll watch it because we're always like talking about how great Studio Trigger is, but we haven't seen nearly enough Studio Trigger. Trigger shit. Yeah, we still haven't seen Killer Kill. We we haven't seen Promare. I still haven't seen Promare. I haven't. Uh, uh, it's gonna be back in theaters later this month. And like we should go week. watch it. And I'm th- yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we go should nerds. Go, see it. go watch the movie. Go watch Promare by Studio Trigger. And um, yeah, that, that's the resolution to Kiki's delivery service. She saves Tombo. They're we're we're led to believe they're dating. They're they're clearly happy being friends and hanging out together and and Gigi like so stops talking like like he hasn't been talking for the rest of the time but we know that he got together with like the neighbor cat Mm -hmm. which was like a little fucking aristocats white cat Mm -hmm. character yeah and uh it's just because the the, the credits start rolling at some point but the movie's not done right 
Because the the very last piece of dialogue is like her talking to Gigi and Gigi just meowing. Like he's not even speaking anymore. And like originally when Gigi wasn't speaking, we thought it was because the same reason she couldn't fly anymore. Like she lost her magic ability. But the connection between her her doppelganger or her familiar character here is that like they grew up and they kind of grew apart. Like that's how you know that Kiki's kind of becoming a woman here. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we see we see the par- the dad. We see the dad again. He received a letter from Kiki, mm-hmm. and the mom is making potions again, which again great animation. Oh, did you hear? Our baby girl has a delivery service. Mm-hmm. And ending. I mean, end it's- the, the movie. It's really good. It's really sweet. We didn't think it was gonna be this crazy i didn't think i was gonna be as entertained if, if you're listening to it and you think it's super weird that we're trying to over over explain what's like a children's film you need to watch it because like the it feels so like like an experience while watching it and i i love that we find these old gems because i feel like some of the old anime that we will watch and we have to watch maybe some of them haven't aged that well mm-hmm. you know yeah like it's like um there, there's certain works that I'm starting to see. That, like, if you haven't seen it as an adult, you don't have a real representation of what you saw. Because some of these, like, works almost feel like they were... Like, if Kiki's Delivery Service is written and produced in a way to capture, like, the child mind space and, like, that way of thinking, to capitalize on it and make money off it, some of these animes that we saw, like, when we were teenagers, were clearly made to, like, stimulate those areas of our brain... But now, with a fully developed, like, adult mind, I'm like, wow, they fucking tricked us. Mm -hmm. Like, this isn't nearly as good as I remember it. Like, like when you see, like, like toy commercials now, you're like, huh? The fuck is this? How did I fall? Honestly, honestly, I hate that I fall for Facebook ads. Because, like, all my Facebook ads are relevant. I haven't used Facebook in forever. I, I verbally started saying I'm considering, like, buying Beyblades as a joke the other day. And now I keep getting these really high quality like Beyblade ads. Like they look mm. super dope. It's just, it's like, do you want to import the best Beyblade from Japan? I'm just like, maybe. <laughs> what, what do you mean? And then they show you this badass looking Beyblade. I'm like, hmm. Mm. I, I'm interested all, mm-hmm. all of a sudden. <laughs> damn man, but damn, I was it, that was a good experience. Yeah, everyone should watch Kiki's Delivery Service. Um, and as for this episode. Episode 60, which you all are listening to on Monday morning, September 13th, give or take a couple days. Um, That's all for us today. We're going to do a nerd down as part of this episode we're about to record as soon as we're done recording this one, which is going to be our 60.5 season two season finale. Oh, fuck, man. Season two is great. I can't wait for season three. Yep. But that's it for now, nerds. This has been Between Nerds.